It's very likely that when we do finally make a detection of interstellar intelligence, it's going to be very different from what we know. We could miss a signal if it was structured in such a way that we would have analyzed it as a human language instead of as a non-human communication system. It's kind of best to understand what you have in your own backyard as you're looking up into the cosmos. We have thousands, hundreds of thousands, probably millions of examples of evolved communication systems from our beautiful planet. Humpback just made a perfect animal, a perfect organism, a perfect system to look for life. And they have an extremely complex acoustic vocalization. And this is the classic recording that changed hearts and minds the world over in the early 1970s. Frank Watlington and Roger Payne's work, connecting these to the singing whales. I hear lone crooners calling by themselves. I hear these crazy males uh, trying to attract a female ultimately, but it's hard not to put all kinds of emotion and thoughts into these sounds because they're so complex and marvelous. These whales have evolved these incredible social institutions and complex vocalizations without technology. And it shows you that our exoplanets that are drifting around in the cosmos, they could be full of intelligent life that is not transmitting its presence. And then you look under the hood at their brain, at the processor, it's, it's magnificent. Their brains are laced with spindle neurons. And in humans, spindle neurons are associated with language acquisition, social intelligence, facial recognition, and compassion. We also picked humpback whales because they use tools. And their tools are bubble nets, for example. It's like a giant effervescing bubbling cauldron that allows them to essentially create a barrier and force the prey up through the bubble net and trap them against the surface. And then you see the whales coming up with their giant maws and engulfing the fish school. The bubble tools tell you that they're goal-directed. They're very good at planning for the future, anticipating events, and accommodating each other. Humpback whales get together to do bubble netting, and the mitochondrial DNA shows that they're not related to each other necessarily. So they build these long-lasting relationships based on ability, like humans. And as far as we know, I don't know any other animal that forms long-lasting relationships based on ability. Work has also shown that some of these bonds are lasting across summers, decades, perhaps even lifetimes for some of these individuals. You can just call them economic bonds, but boy, when you watch these whales, they sure seem like friendships. Humpback whales had a global communication system before we did. They've essentially had the ocean internet for millions of years. Sound speed in the oceans is five times faster than in air, so oceans are extremely acoustically conductive. Maybe a thousand kilometers away, they can transmit a signal and receive it. The sounds in the ocean in some ways make amazing interstellar analogs. It's thought that blue whales prior to human ship noise could communicate from pole to pole with their very low frequency sounds some amazing work that's been done in the southern oceans. We have looked at the propagation of cultural ripples that move across the oceans. And these are song themes that populations innovate that ripple across the Pacific Ocean that are picked up by non-interacting humpback whale groups. It may take a couple of years for these song innovations to move across the Pacific. Now that is absolutely remarkable and that suggests a global communication system. I think at first they're saying, is anybody out there? Kind of like we're doing with SETI. 
But I think that individuals, once they make contact, can actually plan to meet each other in a few weeks or a month and can signal to start heading toward each other. The challenge, though, of course, is if you get a signal from another whale, like, hey, over here, there's a great food patch, or there's a reproductive opportunity, or I'm being harassed by killer whales, right? For an individual to respond to that, it may take days or weeks to get over there. So it can take, you know, many hours for these sounds to propagate across the oceans. And the whales, if they are communicating over these distances, they're probably packaging and creating their signals for long distance transportation. And so this is a kind of, in a microcosm, a kind of a SETI problem. How do they modify their communication system for a contact that is hours away? and how they get together with other individuals when it takes weeks to months to be in contact. And that's similar to what we will start to experience when we put humans in the solar system. It'll be hours to get a signal and months to get contact again. Well, only the very nearest stars would be picking up on our old television signals, like Bozo the Clown and Howdy Doody are our ambassadors to the stars. <laughs>
we can put this hydrophone array out into this complex feeding and hunting and bubble netting system. And now we can pinpoint individuals, who's doing the calling and how other individuals are responding. So for the first time, we're really gonna be able to put some sort of meaning to these sounds. And then the next round is to do the playbacks of these sounds to the animals to test ideas. It's getting inside their minds, right? What is their sensory world? What are these animals detecting? What are they feeling? the meaning of these sounds. I think that's exciting and that's, that's precisely why I'm working on it. Figuring out their basic intelligence and will we someday be able to have a conversation with them? The reason I support SETI is if somebody was nearby transmitting, it'd be embarrassing not to pick it up. I think the effort itself deprovincializes our thought about ourselves and it gets you thinking big. Let's face it, it's putting us in perspective. When we do that picture of you know, the astronomer staring up at the sky and saying, are we alone? Two things strike me. One is that there's all these animals. We need to pay attention to the non-human communication systems here for practice. But the other thing is, as we look up and say, are we alone? We're asking, where do we fit in? <laughs> I think it was the, the song of the humpback whale that made us realize that there are otherworldly beings right here in our oceans. Now, is there life out there in the universe? Statistically speaking, it seems, yes, there, there most likely is. And I think through these collaborative ventures between people in the animal sciences and SETI, I think we'll get closer to this wonderful and perplexing question.